Oh, snap. It's another snap review from the family gamers. The mysterious lake monsters have finally revealed themselves. There's only one problem, though. The lake is not big enough to hold them all. Who can win control of the lake? This is a snap review for Block Ness. Block Ness is an area control game designed by Laurent Escoffier and published by Blue Orange. It's really tactile and it works in three dimensions, which is really cool. Two to four people can play in about 15 minutes. It's best for ages eight and up, although kids a bit younger can play too. So mom, let's talk about the art. The toy factor on this game is huge. Simon Dushi and Dominique Breton have made an excellent lake surface and these really cool sea serpent monsters that are plastic. The sea serpents fit really nicely into the holes on the board. And each of the four types is distinct, not just in its color, but also in the subtle patterns that run across each segment of each type of monster. So Asher, let's talk about the mechanics and how you play the game. After getting out all the pieces, put the board back in the box. This becomes your play area, with plenty of room to poke the pegs of the sea monsters into the holes on the board. Find your starting monster. It's the one with the least height, and put it somewhere near the middle of the board. Now each player takes turns adding onto their own monster. Each turn, you add a new segment, adding onto either the head or the tail of your monster. You're allowed to cross over any serpent's body, but never underneath. And you can't cross anyone else's head or tail, either. If you can't place any more segments, you pass. When all players have passed, whoever has the least body segments unplayed is the winner. If there's a, if there's a tie, the player whose monster has a higher head wins. So Asher, let's talk about what we expected when we first picked up Block Ness. It looked like a lot of fun even before we knew how to play. The plastic monster pieces invite you to pick them up and play around with them. Because these pieces looked so much like a toy, I wondered if the game would offer interesting choices or if it was mostly just going to be about making fun designs and putting your sea serpent pieces into the board. But I was surprised. First, by the attention to detail. Each sea monster not only has a different design, but its selection of pieces is a little bit different. You can see that even with the starting pieces, that some are longer and some are shorter. Every sea monster has wide pieces, narrow pieces, short pieces, tall pieces. They've all got some kind of a range there, but every monster's piece selection is a little bit different than any other monster. The spatial relations required in this game were actually really challenging for most players. It's tough to see exactly where your pieces are going to fit without taking them and literally putting them onto the board. It plays about the same with all player counts because with a higher player count, there's more space on the board that you can use. We were also surprised to find that planning helps you for sure, but it feels like there's a lot of luck. There's no hidden information at all, but it's difficult for most people to picture how to fit their own pieces and how to allow for other people's moves that they can't always predict. Finally, we were pleasantly surprised that kids win this game just as often as adults do. Turns out kids have better spatial planning than adults. So Asher, what do you think? Would we recommend this game? Block Ness is fun and fast, and it's really easy to understand. Kids younger than eight may struggle a little bit with the placement rules, but other than that, it's a good game. So what do you think we should rate Block Ness? I think we should give it four and a half Loch Ness monsters out of five. And that's Block Ness in a snap. snap.